Welcome to Scots of the World. A warm Scottish welcome to all. Karen Kerr and I'm one of the co-founders of Scots of the World and we are delighted to be joining you today. Um, we are so sad that we can't be in there in person um, but we decided to record a little video just to give you a little insight into Scots of the World, what we're doing um, and to meet our vendors. Um, we were actually at Tartan Week in 2013. Um, the platform started as a communication tool, as a social platform for expats and Scots living around the world to stay connected to Scotland. Um, but it's become much more than that. Uh, we looked to add value to that audience. Um, we've grown our Facebook page to 18,500 followers who are very engaged and, you know, just thirsty um, for a little bit of Scotland. So we decided, what can we do to try and bring Scotland ever closer? Um, as a branding designer, I, I feel that um, Scotland as a brand has never been stronger. Um, you know, we are known for innovation, we are known for quality, but we're also known for not shouting about it. We don't like to blow our own bagpipes. So at Scots of the World, we offer a platform for those makers manufacturing in Scotland um, to reach that global audience. It's a completely different skill set for a lot of the makers. Um, to, to get online and to navigate the digital space. So that's where we come in. We have 16 years experience in digital marketing and branding and design. We are here to find the audience and introduce all of our brands to you. Um, give you an opportunity to see brands that you perhaps have never seen before and perhaps brands that you would only ever see if you were actually on our shores which unfortunately at the moment we know has been so restricted and we cannot wait to welcome you back. We are keen to tell you the story behind the brand, you know, the heritage, the family, and all those funny stories and the banter that comes with being a Scottish brand and a Scottish business, really sharing that personal story behind the product, behind the production, um, and giving you an insight as to how these products are made in traditional ways and new ways, forging new traditions um, and just creating that family. I designed the Scots of the World brand to, to be a family crest, to be one clan that everyone can, can form under. Um, you know, if you don't have your own direct heritage or bloodline, then we would warmly welcome you under the Scots of the World family clan. Currently, we have a hand-selected, curated group of vendors, and we will continue to look to see what the audience is looking for. We have a personal shopping service, so if there is something specific that you would like to buy, please get in touch with us and we can find that in Scotland for you, ensuring the quality and, more importantly, that Made in Scotland label. We hope to help our vendors continue to innovate, to showcase the luxury, the quality, and all projects coming out of Scotland. A platform to allow you to find your own little bit of Scotland. Today we have a short interview with some of our vendors um, and we will be delighted to introduce more in the coming weeks. Um, as, a, as a digital platform we are constantly evolving so it's going to be um, a different experience every time you visit. So please join us and I'll introduce some of our vendors. Thank you. My name's uh, Martin Fleet and our company is uh, Sheila Fleet Jewellery. Um, we're based up in Thorney Islands, right off the north coast of Scotland. There's a small group of 
beautiful islands and uh, that is where we design and make all our jewellery. I'm Fiona Matheson and I'm a Scottish artist based in Inverness which is the capital city of the Highlands. I was born in Aberdeen and I studied at Winchester School of Art in England before returning back home. Uh, my name is Charlie Stott. I'm the owner of Hayward and Stott. We are silversmiths in Edinburgh and Scotland. We're a company which started uh, 25 years ago, uh, originally making and selling antique silver, but we've developed into manufacture of our own range of domestic silver, particularly with regard to Scottish and Highland thistle designs. Uh, we have a small workshop and our own silversmiths and uh, we are now moving into uh, a more expansive range of associated products uh, to our own designs which uh, we are developing over 2021 and beyond. My name is Ian Miller and I'm the co-founder of the Scottish Bee Company. I set the business up with my wife Susie and our motivation was to give a helping hand to the, the struggling bee population and we do that by selling premium provenance honeys in Scotland and overseas. My name's Alison Hartley. Um, I'm an artist, a full-time artist pretty much now. Um, in terms of how I got here, I seem to be just born creative. I was um, the original Blue Peter kid for anyone who knows that reference. If there was something to make or build or draw, I would do it. Um, I, I won prizes for my art at primary school as soon as I was eight or ten. Just seemed to be something I was good at. Um, at high school was the same and I, then I went on to art college. Started by a friend who, who got an expensive new kitchen put in and she wanted a big cow painting <laughs> with a particular background um, colour in it to match her splashback. So I said, oh, I'll do that. And that got me started and then it's just sort of steamrolled from there. My name's Ken McClymont. I'm a fine artist. Uh, I was born in Glasgow in 1958. I studied at Duncan of Johnson College of Art from 1977 to 82. Um, since then, I've continued to paint, paint, and I work in theatre occasionally. My name's Colin Campbell. Um, the name of the business is McRossley Glasgow Limited and uh, we've been operating here for some 20 odd years. Uh, I first acquired the business uh, back in the early 1980s when it was in receivership. Um, so at that time we were making heavy horse harness, carriage driving harness, but now we've diversified into a much wider range of accessories, you know, kilt belt spurns, uh, briefcases, various belts as well, waist belts, fashion belts, just fashion accessories. You can make anything from a, a keyring to a briefcase. Um, the, the company was founded about 1887 uh, by one Peter McRosty who came from Perthshire, uh, then from Creef to Glasgow. And he was the one that started the, the, the business of saddlers and harness makers. I'm Morag McPherson and uh, my business is Morag McPherson Textiles and I'm a textile artist stroke designer and um, I create surface patterns and I have them digitally printed onto fabrics and a patchwork fabrics and I end up with limited edition cushions, scarves, uh, fashion accessories, homeware accessories and I have a range of unique individual artwear clothing and one-off interior pieces which usually take shape in um, reversible one-size-fits-all type of garments like kimono style robes and wraparound skirts uh, no fuss no sort of just you know very simple lines and shapes and things we uh, design everything that we make but on top of that, we are open to the manufacture of specific commissions for people. This could be a Scottish quake of a certain size. Uh, we can engrave the detail onto the silver. It can be an icon, it can be a coat of arms, it can be 
anything really that you might want. You could even actually produce uh, a digital rendering of a house, for example, on the silver. Silver itself is possibly the most malleable and design friendly metal that can be produced. Our silver is known as sterling silver, which means that in the UK, it cannot be sold unless the purity of the silver is 92.5% pure silver. The remaining 7.5% are other metals like copper, and these are only there to assist the actual manufacturer. If it was pure silver, the silver is pretty soft, so we need a slightly harder grade. However, if one wants, one can produce 99.9% .9 silver. But uh, that's unusual, I have to say. So bees and insects, bee, bees and other insects have a super important role in pollination. And my wife and I had seen the reporting of the, the threats to the, the honeybee population and to other bee populations, really enthused by the idea of creating a, a purpose-driven business that could make a meaningful contribution to, to help that. And in Scotland, we've got this beautiful premium provenance header honey product and we don't shout about it from the rooftop so we did that and um, we started shouting about it we won a top quality platinum award at the London International Honey Awards and we established the world's first BSI kite mark for for provenance assurance and started to reinvest in the pollinator population and to date we've we've created Scotland's first beekeeping apprenticeship and we've committed another 25 million bees to before my time in the company, the circus had come to Glasgow and the, the old saddler, master saddler then was Hugh Mason. And I remember him telling me a story about when the circus arrived, it was a, an elephant had got a sore foot and they tracked him down and asked him to make a, a boot for it. And so he managed to do that. So that was his kind of claim to fame. He always used to say that he could make a battleship from leather. He was very good. Um, I was commissioned, a guy walked into my workshop here one day with a pair of green welly boots. He was actually a, a, a tribute act to Billy Connolly. So he, drum, he do, dropped these down onto the bench and said, can you turn these into big banana feet for me? So, and I actually managed to do that. It was quite a challenge. I did a, a project in, uh with the Hyatt Union Square Hotel in New York um, a few years ago. So I did um, these lovely sort of um, nature inspired designs that um, the Benny Lau Design Group picked up on when they saw my work at the International Contemporary Furniture Fair in New York when I was exhibiting there one year. And she had a connection to the whole Glasgow style and she picked up this sort of the influence in my patterns uh, alongside sort of Charles Rennie Macintosh, she thought. Um, so she picked up that kind of influence and wanted me to do two sort of different panels for spring, summer and autumn, winter. These were then printed onto headboard fabric and they were put in about 200 rooms in the new Hyatt Union Square Hotel in New York City in Union Square. And they were sort of reversible so they could be changed um, to do with the seasons and they were like the artwork in the room rather than paintings they just um, embedded the artwork into this uh, sort of uh, panel behind the bed and it was all the, the idea behind the brief was because of the the park in Union Square outside the hotel and they were trying to bring the nature inside and to the hotel so that was a a lovely commission to have and um, so that's all in Union Square Hotel now if anybody's ever in it have a look. <laughs>
where we look at paintings and she would teach me to look at paintings. Um, and then I went to art college and we were taught an awful lot about Scottish colourists. Uh, superb people like Peblo and Crawhall and Arthur Melville, uh, McGregor. We, we sort of, it wasn't drummed into us that that was Scottish art, but that's what we, we were taught. You know, we were taught to draw and we were taught to paint. Um, and it's so it stayed with me and the, the colors I think the colors that I use in my work come from that basically is and the Scottish landscape being what it is has those colors there's so many colors when I bring people to Scotland they, they, they can't believe the colors in Scotland which is fantastic I'm really lucky to be living here there's influences all around. I love the beaches. I love the beaches of the west coast of the Highlands and the northeast coast of Scotland. Inverness is centrally located and it has mountains and rivers and everything that an artist would want. Um, I live um, just outside Kirkubri which is known as the Scottish artist town because of uh, a lot of the artists at the turn of the 20th century that sort of uh, all uh, got together around here and I live up on a hill overlooking Kirkubri Bay in a little uh, shepherd's cottage it's called and at the back of a farm so yeah it's quite isolated but at the same time I'm a five minute drive from Kirkubri so it gives me the best of both worlds and the nature around is just stunning. Scotland, to me, is a great, great country. It's our home, it's our identity, and it's family history. Perhaps more than that, it inculcates in us a great sense of belonging. I don't think Scotland is necessarily the best country in the world, but it is my country. Moreover, perhaps, it's the greatest influence on how we design and manufacture silver. Three words to dis describe my artist community would be inspiring, supportive and encouraging. If I were to describe Scotland for us in three words, it would be unspoiled natural larder. All people in Scotland make us are very passionate about what they do. Um, they're obviously very creative and exceptionally innovative in, in what they do. I would say that's certainly three pretty good words to describe many fantastic makers across Scotland. We have a oh, amazing history. I mean, here in Orkney, we have uh, Scarabree, which is, you know, one of the best Stone Age preserve sites in Europe. And, um, you know, so to have something that goes back 5000 BC, that's before the pyramids, that's a long time ago. And um, I think to be inspired by, you know, our, our sort of ancestors and sort of reflect on what's been done in history and then interpret it into our jewellery is, is, is beautiful and that has a great story with it and, and what, you know, lots of visitors love that link to the past and bringing it to the present. I find the historical piece quite interesting, the, the way that we keep our bees hasn't changed a great deal since the Bronze Age and Scottish beekeepers have always had to, to fight the biting, biting winds and uh, keep their bees safe. So if you go to this Carden Abbey in, in Fife or to the Royal Palace at Falkland, you'll see um, recessed in the 12th century walls there are the original skep beehives which, which the Scottish artisans used to, to make honey and, and not very much has changed at all in, in the intervening centuries. People um, tend to, well, the clothing side of it, you know, when they put on one of my, you know, they're not for the faint hearted, I suppose. They're very, very bold and colourful and unique and individual. So when people tell me that, you know, that it just makes them feel special, it makes them feel uh, different, unusual, individual, these kind of words. Um, and the, in people's homes, I mean, some people would will start an entire 
room makeover with one of my cushions and then pick out the colours from it and paint the walls and so I mean they can be very sort of central points in a, in a room makeover or they can just be a lovely addition and um, they seem to sort of tie in and sort of you can clash them or you can you know tone them I, I do I do do um, sort of uh, colour schemes that are less bright and bold as well as all the, all the colourful stuff so but because of the digital printing I like to get lots of colour in there kind of thing. First foremost, they have to like the design. That that's what draws you in, and um, you know it's in precious metals and silver and, and gold mainly, with beautiful ground glass enamels. So there's there's a real beautiful interest in what they see, but there's lots of stories behind each of the collections that has inspired Sheila, and each piece comes with that story. We've got a lot of people saying to us that our honey tastes like the honey that they, they were used to have from their, their grandfather's hives. So a lot of people that have experienced proper honey and honey that's particularly has been foraged on, on a heather moorland where there's a really punchy flavour to it. It feels like they've dipped their finger into, into a honeycomb and, and that's a totally different experience to a jar of, uh, of cheaper blended and, and perhaps heated honey. We've done nothing to it. It doesn't, it doesn't get any hotter than it would naturally in the hive and it, it very much feels like the experience you would get of taking honey from a hive and just just eating it so it's, it's a it's a really immersive experience based in the lothians our hives are located in aberdeenshire fife perthshire as well as right here in the scottish borders amongst this beautiful scottish heather we now have over 500 hives in just two years we have managed to increase the bee population by about 28 million People have just said that they really love the painting and they enjoy looking at it and it reminds them of where they've been or where their relatives live um, and it's, it's a, great, a great thing to have forever. We're different from a mass-produced thing. And people, are, I think, are looking now for a, some somebody to make something for them, which is it's a two-way thing for me, um, because someone's found me and then they've asked me to make something for them, so that becomes quite a personal thing. Most of the time I feel that uh, what draws people to my work is the colour. Um, it's, but as you see on the websites, it's very colourful. I love colour. I love colour combinations. I love juxtapositions of colours. I love people saying, don't put red and green together. It's the first thing I do, put red and green together. Don't do this, don't do that. And that's, that to me is what I think draws people to my work. It's the, this, Within a certain harmony within the work, there, there is a lot of um, conflict within the work, um, which comes through experimentation and trial and error, which is, is part of the job. I see, I see it as part of the job. It's part of the experimentation and painting, especially abstract painting. What 
people see um, is they love the colours. I suppose colour is a word that comes up a lot and expression. Um, so capturing something about the animal in a, an artistic way. If I, you know, if I'm doing a pet portrait, for example, it's got to look absolutely like that person's pet without a doubt. But beyond that, it's very much a piece of art in that it's got colour and texture and vibrancy and, um, you know, it's, it's modern and sort of jazzy almost, I suppose. When our customers refer back to us having received any of our products, particularly of those of the Scottish design, they feel that we are one of the few companies that are offering, for example, a comprehensive range of sterling silver quakes, the famous drinking cups of Scotland. I think that they feel that we're one of the few companies that produces traditional and indeed to some extent some modern designs which complement their lifestyles.